All right, everybody. Today is going to be another one of those very tricky topics, and may be the contender for most disliked video here on the channel. Next to our "Why the Game Industry Needs More Diversity" piece, but the topic for today is an ever popular one. It is about separating the art from the artist, or can you do this? This is in response to a piece on Eurogamer that went up a few days ago by the time you're watching this. I'll include a link to it somewhere around here. But the basic point of the article was discussing Lovecraft and the whole idea of the Lovecraftian theme and stating that it's time for developers, writers, and any creative people to move away from Lovecraft due to H.P. Lovecraft's own beliefs. And let's stop things here for a second and get this out of the way. H.P. Lovecraft was a super racist. He was a mega racist and xenophobe, even for his day. There's no point in arguing against that, and if anyone wants to leave comments below demanding that I cite references or want to post pieces defending him, just stop watching this video right now. We're not arguing that point. But... When it comes to Lovecraft, as with any figure whose work transcend, transcends their time, the discussion about separating the art from the artist comes into play. We've been seeing this a little bit more lately in the game industry, with developers of either indie to AAA titles who may say something either misogynistic, racist, and probably a few worse things. There are discussions regarding uh, that Kingdom Come Deliverance game. There is a little bit of a hoopla over Subnautica, Battle Brothers, and I'm sure there are many more examples we can think of. But keeping this back with H.P. Lovecraft, as anyone who studies horror or science fiction knows, Lovecraft has become its own medium. It's the idea behind everybody's two-part uh, sentence or two-part term, cosmic horror. The idea that the universe is a dark and scary place, and that there are things out there waiting to get us. And Lovecraft is the uh, writer who popularized this with the Cthulhu mythos, uh, the dream, I forget the exact term for that, and of course elder gods like Cthulhu, yogg Sagoth, and other ones, which I'm probably never going to pronounce, I'm sure most of you aren't. And Lovecraft, or the Lovecraftian themes, have become a element or a source of inspiration for many writers, filmmakers, uh, TV show producers, and of course game developers. And we can see this either overtly, such as in games like, well, Dark Corners of the Earth, uh, I think it was Cthulhu, Dark Corners of the Earth. We could see this in Darkest Dungeon, and we even see things with inspiration, such as everybody's favorite game, Internal Darkness, Sandy's Requiem. And this is where things get very tricky when it comes to the Oracle, and again, to this idea of separating the art from the artist. It's very easy to discount things that you don't like or even care about them. If I get an announcement tomorrow that says that the NFL is being dissolved and football in the United States is going away forever, I'm not going to bat much of an eye there. I'm sure a lot of other people would. But when we talk about things that we enjoy or things that become a part of our own personal preferences, this is when things become very heated. There is that very famous adage, don't meet your heroes. And one of the reasons why things get so heated is that for a lot of people who prescribe to fandom and get really involved with something, it becomes a part of their own personality, their being. So if you really like something, then you must assume that the person who wrote it or created it must be like you. So when you hear stuff that's discrediting your favorite author, your favorite game developer, writer, you name it, then you naturally assume, well, if they're talking about that stuff to them, they must be thinking about that to myself because I like it. And we get the whole heated debate and whatnot from there. But when it comes to this whole discussion about separating the art from the artist, this is when things again get very, uh, very heated, I guess. Because as we have seen with any cultural medium or platform or work of art that basically lives past the creator's life, 
it does take on a life of its own. It's why we still read works of uh, fiction like Mary Shelley's Frankenstein, uh, Lure of the Flies, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, Greek mythology, uh, any other mythology you can think of. And again, a lot of the stuff that has become great works of art existed in a time that things weren't so great, or the people who created them weren't exactly the best of people, even by that era standards. And it can be hard to separate the two. I've always said this, I've always believed this, that you cannot hold history to a modern lens. It's just, well, it just ends in madness, keeping with our theme for today. Now, going back to Lovecraft, again, when it comes to the idea of cosmic horror and a lot of what he wrote about, there are, of course, other authors, and he even took inspiration from other writers at his time. But his whole mythos that he's created has become a very rich and very wide canvas. With that said, of course, his exact work, of course, definitely delves into racist and xenophobic there we go, tendencies. And again, there are many examples of it out there, and people who have written about him or knew him personally have talked about some of his beliefs there. But when it comes to the writer of the article, they basically felt that because Lovecraft was his way, it essentially taints the well of anything that has to do with the Lovecraftian mythos. And for myself, and I'm sure for a lot of people watching this right now, you don't exactly agree with that as well. And to talk more about that, we're going to load up a footage of a game that was very influenced by Lovecraft, and if you're a fan of the channel, you know what we're going to be talking about next. And now a quick shout out to the supporters over on Patreon.com slash GWBicer. So here we have footage of Darkest Dungeon, which was highly influenced by Lovecraftian themes and the whole idea behind what we've called cosmic horror before. That the universe is a mean and uncaring place. There are forces beyond what we can understand, such as that Shambler totem right there. And if we had Wayne June here, he could probably add a lot more gravitas to it. But despite the fish people showing up on screen now, reducing Lovecraft to simply uh, alien gods, fish people, and racism, I think is a bit too reductionary, or too reactionary, I should say. And as we've seen, there have been many people who have taken this and have gone in very wide and far directions beyond Lovecraft's original stories and again the racism and xenophobic tendencies that he displayed back then. And this is always the tough part when it comes to the discussion about separating the art from the artist. Because there are many examples of history of people who have put together great works or memorable pieces that have transcended their lives who may not have lived the best lives or had polarizing viewpoints. There are discussions about, uh, I think his name is uh, Oscar Scott Carr, the writer behind Ender's Game, about his homophobic behaviors, the writer behind the original Charlie and the Chocolate Factory for being an anti-Semite, and there have been discussions and debates over Walt Disney for years now as to whether or not he did support Nazism. And unfortunately, finding a straight answer to that on the internet is almost as maddening as trying to pronounce Cthulhu properly. But, whatever the case may be, it always comes back to just where exactly has the art gone? How has it transcended from that original piece or that original author? And when it comes to Lovecraft, again, so many people have taken these themes and ran with it from a video game perspective, books, TV, film, you name it, that have managed to distance and divorce themselves from Lovecraft's own original viewpoints. And I think for a lot of people, when we hear Lovecraft, we don't think of Howard Philip Lovecraft and his own life. We think about the Cthulhu mythos. We think about cosmic horror and all the... Uh, I guess avenues that you can explore within that and like for myself 
I would definitely say that Lovecraft as a theme, not as a person, has transcended the artist. But again, this is a topic that you can certainly hear strong thoughts from either viewpoint. But, like I said, I don't agree with the original point of this article that because of Lovecraft's own views that it taints everything, even those beyond what he originally envisioned or touched. But, I am sure there's going to be a lot of comments below talking about things either for or against this. But, with that said, we're going to wrap things up here for today's Industry Insight. So again, when it comes to these topics, it's always hard to try and separate both the art from the artist and the fans from the piece as well. And it's something that is never easy to discuss. And as more things have come to light with famous actors and authors today, I'm sure this is not going to be the last time this discussion pops up. But thank you so much for watching today's video. Be sure to check out our Discord channel link below. And if you have a topic you'd like me to cover in a future video, please don't hesitate to get in touch. But check back for daily discussions on game design here and on game wisdom where we examine the art and science of games. Thanks for watching the video. If you enjoy things, be sure to do all the liking and subscribing that the kids are doing these days. Check out our Discord channel link down below where we hang out and chat game design and come back later tonight for our regular streamings. But that's it, and tune in for more great content here and on Game Wisdom, where we examine the art and science of games.